session. Proceed to checkpoint Echo 23. Probe suspected enemy movement at the creek. Report crossing phase line Bravo. You are part of a two-man team, trained as both a tactical pilot and an observer gunner. Your mission, take an H-13K and locate the enemy. of the Earth flying, the tactical environment for aircraft on the battlefield of today and tomorrow. What maneuvers will help the armed reconnaissance helicopter live in this environment? In this film, you will see the Bell H-13K demonstrate a series of combat tactical maneuvers. The H-13K is basically an H-13H, but with a slightly larger rotor diameter and a supercharged engine to assure a constant payload for any condition of altitude and temperature. Upon entering suspected enemy area and coming under observation or fire, the first maneuver is to hit the deck at a maximum rate of descent and seek cover, dodging, twisting, turning, taking advantage of the terrain. Put yourself in the cockpit of the H-13K. Notice the high rate of descent and steep attitude. Control applied to hit the deck is a simultaneous full down collective and full forward stick. Recovery is made as low and as fast as the terrain allows. The twist is a yawing maneuver at normal cruise for employing fixed machine guns in reconnaissance by fire, probing for the enemy. Spotting a suspected enemy position, the pilot applies full left then full right rudder, providing coverage about 60 degrees either side of the flight path. The gunner observer fires to develop the enemy, defining his size and strength. As the helicopter twists, he fires short bursts into the suspected area. The twist at cruise minimizes vulnerability and serves to extend mission range. Having located the enemy position, the reconnaissance helicopter takes cover behind a hill building or tree line, ready to engage the enemy with fire. Rapid application of full up collective jumps the helicopter to a suitable observation and firing altitude. It twists and sprays the enemy with bursts of fire. A getaway is made by diving for cover before the enemy can react with return fire. The K now takes up a new position to repeat the jump fire run maneuver. In this manner, the armed combat reconnaissance helicopter can take full advantage of its two greatest assets, concealment and surprise. Upon breaking off the engagement, the pilot could peel off either left or right, avoiding the rotor downwash, confusing the enemy with a constantly varying flight path. Watch the maneuver again from the ground. Note the high rate of climb, the sudden stop at the peak of the climb, the terrain coverage through use of rudder control, and the rapid dive for cover. This is not friendly territory, so take advantage of all concealment available. In navigating across unfamiliar terrain, the pilot may often be forced to do a quick decelerating flare to reduce speed, change direction, or land while staying low and concealed. Here, for example, you find yourself flying into a wooded dead end. Execute the Woe Boy, a sideward flare maneuver. Then turn and proceed more slowly to investigate the terrain beyond. Now take a look at the old way of performing a decelerating flare or quick stop. 
Notice that the helicopter goes up above the tree line where it may get shot out of the sky. This type of maneuver cannot be tolerated in nap of the earth flying. Notice how this flare is executed down among and below the trees, fully concealing the helicopter. The scramble is a maximum acceleration takeoff. Notice that you stay within two to three feet of the ground throughout the takeoff run. This technique adds a measure of safety to a downwind takeoff or for rapid departure under fire. The scramble is particularly effective when you find yourself, as here, boxed into a wooded corner, committed to takeoff regardless of wind direction. The scramble is made in ground effect with the use of maximum power available and sufficient forward cyclic to keep the helicopter close to the ground. Just the reverse is the quick squat, a rapid landing from high speed, low level flight. The approach is made downwind, followed by a rapid 180 degree flare while reducing power. The pilot uses full lateral cyclic to maximize rate of roll and minimize the turn radius. He experiences one and a half to two G's during this maneuver. Thereby, the H-13K can decelerate, reverse direction, and land within a space of 50 yards. From the cockpit, watch the wrong way to perform this maneuver. Notice the flare is high above the trees, exposing the helicopter to enemy action. Now watch the correct way to perform a quick squat. Notice the rapid 180 degree decelerating turn below the trees all the way around to a touchdown. The tactical corner is a 90 degree change of direction, but it's more than just a turn, it's a corner. By contrast, this standard turn has a large radius forcing the helicopter above the trees in completing the turn. This tactical corner is a 2G turn using full lateral cyclic control for maximum rate of roll. Notice the difference. The helicopter stays within the confines of the terrain and remains concealed. The reversal is a rapid 180 degree change of direction. This maneuver permits evasive action with minimum exposure should enemy fire be encountered. It is performed as fast and as low as the terrain permits. By contrast, watch a standard 180 turn, a gradual roll, a moderate angle of bank. However, you are forced up above the trees, exposed and vulnerable. Watch the rate of roll this time. With a 60 degree bank, the pilot shortens his turning radius, stays below the trees, and takes advantage of a nearby creek for cover. Now ride through a reversal at two G's. Notice the high turning rate and completion of the maneuver on the deck. Not one of the army dozen, but rather the heart of nap of the earth flying is in taking advantage of the cover and concealment afforded by the terrain. Combining tactical corners, reversals, woe boys, scrambles, and quick squats in carrying out the mission. Here, Going through low brush, the helicopter stays close to the ground, dodging and darting much as a combat infantryman does in running by bounds from cover to cover on the battlefield. The pilot and the gunner observer work as a team, reconnoitering in advance of the main party, scouting out the enemy, yet always seeking cover and concealment. Their mission may be accomplished alone or in company with another scout helicopter. For dangerous missions, the lead scout vehicle could be a drone, controlled by the observer in the second ship. Here the K takes good advantage of a creek bed, getting down in and below the banks, affording a minimum target. Enemy might see only an occasional flashing rotor blade. Navigation may be a problem in nap of the earth flying. Here's a solution. A full power climb, a wing over, and a dive back to cover. Just time enough for a quick orientation to the surrounding terrain. Almost concealed again, just the whirling rotor visible, the least vulnerable part of the helicopter, far less vulnerable than the aviator observer team. Notice the use of a creek bed, minimum rotor clearance, but avoiding detection while seeking the enemy. The mission takes you across a short stretch of open country 
then into the woods. Here you can't fly above the trees, you must get down among the trees. It is essential that the combat aviator become as familiar with the width of his aircraft in terms of rotor diameter as he is with the location of the fenders on his car. Then he may take advantage of terrain such as this and afford himself the maximum concealment available. Slowed to 30 knots, but avoiding detection, he maintains the advantage of surprise, which could be lost above the trees, even at high speed. The nap of the earth plus the army dozen are keys to concealment, surprise, and survival. The possibility always exists that combat damage may force an emergency power off landing from low altitude. Ride one through in the cockpit. Watch your RPM, 80 knots, altitude, 5 feet. Emergency, flare, gain altitude, then down collective, stick back, stay close to the ground, slow down, hold it. Now pull pitch on the ground, no problem in low level emergencies. But the mission is not completed. You've been under enemy small arms fire and have to make a quick inspection of the aircraft. Uh-oh, the tail rotor blade has been hit several times. And the main rotor blade has also suffered two, three, or four hits. It doesn't look nearly as bad as damage you've seen in wood blades in Korea. These all-metal main and tail rotor blades are able to absorb a considerable amount of damage. Not being in friendly territory, you continue the mission and change these components later. It does not put you out of action. Now take another look at the low auto rotation. Notice the flare first, then down collective, continue to flare, staying close to the ground, gradually leveling, and a nice smooth touchdown. An emergency landing can just as easily be made during a tactical corner. From a downwind or crosswind position, you have adequate time to execute a 90 degree turn toward or into the wind, completing a power off landing with the ease of a normal auto rotation. In crossing the terrain, you rarely find a spot which is not large enough for the H-13K helicopter. The blivet is a maneuver for landing in an area slightly smaller than the diameter of the main rotor blades. Here the pilot has selected a landing spot on a road in the woods and makes his approach low over the trees. On final, the approach is made at a slow forward speed with a moderate rate of descent, allowing the main rotor blades to trim off small tree branches in clearing a path to the selected landing spot. On takeoff from the blivet spot, the main rotor chops a path through overhanging foliage. It is again apparent in this departure that the pilot must be thoroughly familiar with the size of his helicopter in terms of tail rotor position and main rotor diameter. A slight variation to the blivet is a landing made on a pinnacle or hillside. The approach is low following the rising terrain to the pinnacle at treetop level. The pilot flares and drops into the selected spot. He remains just long enough to complete the mission and then jumps out, diving back down the slope of the hill at treetop level and into cover. The seesaw is an observation maneuver combining maximum visual coverage with surprise and minimum exposure. Here, the helicopter has just been alerted for an artillery fire mission against the enemy on the far ridge. He's in radio contact with fire direction center. He's in position and the first round is on the way. The pilot is told the time to target. He executes a maximum performance climb, arriving at the top of his climb just as the round hits in the target area. His observer senses the splash, calls in a correction, and the helicopter dives for cover. While the helicopter moves to a new position, remaining concealed, 
The guns are adjusted. A new round is on the way. Again he climbs, sees the splash, senses it, corrects, and dives back to cover. For fire adjustment, the seesaw replaces the fixed wing tactic of performing this mission while loitering at observing altitude in full view of the enemy. Now a third maneuver. Notice the steep angle of climb. At the top, he observes fire for effect and assesses target damage. The seesaw is also useful as an aid to navigation during nap of the earth flying in unfamiliar terrain. End of mission. The chopper returns to cover. The Army Dozen, 12 maneuvers for nap of the Earth's survival, demonstrating the agility and tactical maneuverability of the H-13K. Maneuvers selected here are intended only to suggest means of utilizing the observation helicopter in the environment in which it is committed to fly and fight.